Hi everyone, Jordan from Antec here. Today, we're going to start digging into EMU, a new piece of software aimed at DJs, solo musicians, bands or bars that allows users to dynamically control up to a universe of various fixtures and sync them up in time with their musical performances. Today, we've got ourselves some CV tape, a CVC4, a DMX USB Pro, a sound card, and of course, EMU. With this equipment, we'll put together a small setup and show you a couple of different ways that you can sync your lights in time with music that's being played through DJ equipment. First, we want to connect to and open up EMU and tell it we're using a DMX USB Pro. We'll go to our settings, and next, we we'll want to make sure we're at the Output tab. To configure the output of a DMX USB Pro, simply locate it on the list and tick the Enabled checkbox to begin outputting from your DMX USB Pro. If your hardware can output multiple universes, you may need to select which universe you want EMU to run through. The next thing we need to do is assign our fixtures. We'll do this by going to our patch, which is accessed with the button at the top right of our UI. Then, we'll need to browse the manufacturer's list to find the right one for us. EMU has access to the entire Crescent fixture library. So, whether you're working with some inexpensive PARs or moving heads, or you're integrating into a venue with a more professional lighting setup, you'll be able to quickly build or modify your show to suit the different fixture setup available to you. The Crescent Library of Fixtures will automatically assign and label each channel for each fixture once you add it to the patch, so there'll be no guessing what fader does what when we move back to the show. For today's demonstration, we'll be patching a single CVC4 with RGB tape in 8-bit mode and an old-school Entech ET bar. Now, for this fixture, we'll head down to Entech as our manufacturer and select Aleph 2 600 ET. We'll use six channels, so we'll go to mode one. With EMU and Crescent, all of the operating mode options for each fixture, in our case, six, 12, and nine channel modes for the ET bar, are also available for other fixtures too. As we mentioned before, the feature assignment for each channel of each fixture depends on the mode being patched. This will be reflected on the faders in the previous menu when we start creating effects for our show. Now it's time for the CVC4. We'll wanna go down to our generic manufacturer and select RGB 8-bit as our fixture, and we'll drop it into our patch like before. However, there are no mode options to worry about with this particular fixture. The generic manufacturer option is great if you're looking at quickly mapping a stripped-back fixture like an LED parkan, or in our case, a DMX to CV tape controller with simple RGB color channels. Now remember, you can also favorite any fixtures you regularly use by making use of the star icon here. Clicking it will add it to your favorites box for quick access later. Okay, so next we're gonna start adding some widgets to our fixtures to get a neat sound reactive look. We'll start with the oscillator. So what I wanna do first up is go down to my master slider at the bottom left of the screen and pick my BPM. Now I'm a bit of a deep dubstep head and that's the music I'd like to play now. So. I'll set my tempo to around 140 BPM. Dubstep won't move much from this tempo, but other genres such as drum and bass or house might move around between 170 to 178 BPM or 120 to 128 BPM respectively during a set. If you're a DJ playing for a few hours or jumping genres and tempos, you can totally map a MIDI knob to this setting and change EMU's tempo as your set progresses. For this demo, I'll be adding the oscillator to my ET bar. Now, I'm only interested in running RGB channels for this effect. This is despite having six channel mode running. I've done this because one, I'm only running nine of a total of 512 channels across both fixtures, so I'm not limited for space on my universe. And it's nice to have full control already mapped in case I wanna turn my white or amber channels up on the ET bar with the faders here. This allows me to illuminate the room for whatever reason. Next, we'll start setting up my CVC4 and my sound tracker. We'll need to set up my sound card to do this. Today, I'll be using a Tractor compatible Tractor Audio 10 as my sound card running into EMU. This is because it's got RCA inputs already, which is handy, 
and it's what I've got lying around. Just to be clear, this thing is way overkill for the application. Behringer make really good, inexpensive RCA sound cards if you need one in a pinch. You'll also note we're using a Pioneer DJM mixer and we're plugging the Audio 10 directly into the Record Out. This is because on Pioneer mixers, the Record Out output isn't affected by DJs constantly turning up the master volume. Now let's get EMU to recognize our sound card. I'll head over to the settings page and click on the audio tab. Here I can set my audio input device. I'm on input C, so I'll select that from the drop down box. I can also set my audio track frequencies at the same time. I'm gonna run three channels of my fixture, R, G, and B. So I'll set up my tracker to work with this. I'll set my low range to run from 30 hertz to 800. I'll keep my mids where they are and the same for my highs. I'm going to ignore the use of my sub channel, which is why I've changed the bottom frequency of the low channel all the way down to 30 hertz. You can decide what frequency ranges are going to work best for your setup of music. It may take a little bit of trial and error. Now it's time to add effects to our fixtures. We'll start with the oscillator. On the main show screen, select a fader, then move over to the right where you'll find the oscillator widget. The waveform drop down box is currently set to off. So let's add a sine wave. For my effect, I'll set my chase to zero, my shape to 50, my amount to 128, and set my phase for each fader to be split into thirds. Be aware that EMU doesn't represent phase in degrees, but rather as a number between zero and 100. So, if you want to split your wave into three pieces, you'll need to set your phases to 0, 33, and 67. After you've added an oscillator to a fader, you'll see it added to the oscillations list over here to the right. This is where we will need to select the fader oscillators in the future if you want to modify the previously set settings. Let's move over to the sound tracker where we finish off what we started. Similar to the way we add oscillators, we'll first start by selecting the fader we want to respond to our effect. What we first want to do is select the desired audio band for the fader. I'm choosing red for low, green for mid, and blue for my highs. And as before, I'm not using the white channel. Then we'll need to sort out our level, attack, and release for each fader. Just like the oscillator, this is something that you'll have to play around with yourself. I would suggest having a few milliseconds of attack and release just to smooth out the effect. Unlike oscillators, if you click the fader, you'll be able to edit the sound tracker settings you previously set. Well, that's everything covered for today's video. Like, share and subscribe if you found this video useful. Comment down below if you have any questions or you think there's something that we missed. Don't forget to check out our social media pages and stay tuned for more AMU and more helpful Entech tips.